All right, we're back. It's time to go through the seven essential rudiments. The first rudiment is the single stroke roll. And I'm going to demonstrate this slow to fast to slow. So if you really want to study technique, you'll probably be tempted to spend a lot of time looking at those very interesting sticks flashing up and down. But what happens with the sticks is a result of what I'm doing with my hands. So I invite you to watch my hands most of the times I do this, so you'll get a better understanding of the kind of techniques that I'm using to produce the roll that you're about to hear. So here's the single stroke roll, right, left, right, left, alternating, slow, fast, slow. Okay, so there was a lot of things that were happening. Uh, I started off by using a wristed motion where I'm controlling the down and up movement of the stick, keeping my fingers fairly in contact with the sticks at all time. As the roll speed increased, I began to loosen up my grip, allowing for a little bit more rebound. So the stick began to do a little bit more of the work and I wasn't doing quite so much pushing and pulling of the stroke. And then as I got very fast, I switched to a completely bounced technique where I'm using just my fingers to, to make the stick tap, 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 dribble with my fingertips. So I'm going to demonstrate this with just my right hand. I'm going to get in a slightly profile view so you can see what my hand's doing. So as I start the roll, you can see my fingers around the stick. And then as I increase the speed, what I'm going to do is right there, begin opening up my hand. And as I get faster, I start to use a little bit more finger, a little more finger, a little more finger, a little more finger, until I get up into that position without going too fast. Okay, so when I put that together <clears throat> with each hand, I start out by doing each hand just like that, separately. Right hand single strokes, slow to fast to slow. So I can work on what I call the three dimensions of technique. Complete control of the stick, to the other extreme, which is complete bouncing. And then through the middle of that is the blend of the two. So you go from cold through warm up to hot and then back to warm and then in where you started. So that's a way of thinking about it. So then I'll work the left hand the same way. Then I'll work both hands in unison. I really think obviously most of us aren't equal with our hands. We're right or left-handed drummers. So the biggest question that we have is how can we get what seems to be our weaker side like our strong side. So one of the ways to start off is to get both hands to play simultaneously. It seems to work very well to train the left hand with less experience to just follow along with the right hand so that it can feel the movement of the stick. Now to learn this finger bouncing technique, it's a little tricky for a lot of people. There's a lot of discussion about it. Finger control strokes is what it's often called. But I've discovered that if you use a modified grip to start with, I like to jokingly call it the Wolverine grip from having watched the movie The X-Men where Wolverine had the spikes coming out between his knuckles. Now you'll notice that the stick is kind of directly in front of my body. My hands bowed over. So if you were to look at it from a sideways view, I'm barely holding on the stick between my first and second fingers. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just pick up the stick and then drop it. I'm making sure I'm holding it on the flag, which is the balance point of the fulcrum where the stick bounces the most. And then my attempt at this point is to take this finger right there, my middle finger, and after it bounces, you can see that finger flapping back there. I often move it up to my index finger, and you can see I almost missed the pad. You've got to move your hand off to the side. The butt of the stick is way over here now. Then if I go back to my middle finger, it's here. I can even put it in my ring finger and even go all the way to my pinky. It's kind of interesting to play around with moving the stick bouncing technique around your different fingers. But I probably find that I use mostly my middle and ring finger here or mostly my index and middle finger. Now most people can play it like this very easily. It just seems to work very well. But then when they put it back into their hand they start holding the stick way out here like this. 
Now, the natural grip is just to lay the stick in your hand naturally. So the back end of the stick is going to be to the outside of the arm. The tip of the stick is going to be pointing toward the middle. But when we get into this position where the fingers are going to do the work, it's important to get the alignment right where the fingertips are, which you'll see brings the butt of the stick almost directly in alignment with my arm, if not slightly in front of my body. So I'm going to play the right hand, slow to fast to slow, and you're going to see me moving from a wristing motion to a wrist bounce. And then as I get up to the very fast finger control stroke technique, the stick will be more in front of my body. And then as I slow it back down, involving more hand movement, it'll go back out here. So here we go, right hand. Okay. Now it's going to take some time to figure out how to do it with this nat with the original grip here, not this modified grip. But the reason this is a good place to start is it gets the stick in the alignment position of your fingers. So that when you put it back, you just move that finger over, bring the thumb down, and you try to keep the stick in that position. I actually found that by bending my thumb just slightly toward the stick, I was using more of the tip of my thumb versus the whole pad. Then there's less flesh touching the stick, less friction, a little bit more ease and rotation. You can even try things where you lay the stick between your thumb and index finger like this. And then when you lift up your hand, you can take the index finger and start moving the stick. Move it over the pad. The only problem with that is the stick is way up here in this position. And it's going to want to keep going up there unless you squeeze it. And that's going to create resistance. So if you move it down and just scoot your thumb in front of it and just put it right in that little spot, then you're holding on to it with just the tips of your fingers, and then it can pivot very, very quickly. So those are some brief tips on how to get the finger control, control stroke technique going. It takes a little bit of experimentation, though. My college professor, John Mallard, would say, some things can't be taught, they have to be caught. Bike riding's like that, blowing bubbles, whistling. Sometimes this is that way, too. You just have to spend a little time fooling around till you go, ah, there it is. And if you mess with it long enough, you can turn it on and off at different speeds. And I recommend seeing if you can go from kind of slow to fast to slow with just your finger technique. So you really get a lot of coordination with this technique. You can do it with your wrist, but you hear the sound change. It's more powerful, but it's tenser, and you'll burn out. So this technique allows you to keep the fingers bouncing. It's not nearly as fatiguing as if you were trying to whisk that out the whole time. All right, so we're going to go through the other rudiments and additional segments, but we start out with a single stroke roll. This is a very important one. It teaches you a whole lot about how to work with wrist control and finger control and blend and transition between the two. So hopefully this has been helpful. Stay tuned. This is Gary Williams signing out. Check out my websites, drumsetartistry.com and garywilliams.com. See you later.